University of the Philippines. Now, this is the keynote address and devotional. Therefore, we will not have any uh, question answer session right after his address. The question answer sessions will begin from the, the first presentation, from the first plenary session after this. And uh, this year, we are attempting a, um, a different mode, a different method of asking questions. Someone had suggested, uh, to, in order to save time, uh, this method, we are going to try it out uh, and see whether it works or not. If it doesn't, we switch back to, the, you know, to our old uh, way. That is, we will be distributing papers to all of you, uh, sheets of papers. And as the presentation is going on, please write down your questions that you have in your mind about that presentation, OK? And uh, the answers will be there. You can give those questions. And depending on the importance of the question, and also whether there are some doubling of the questions, the moderator will look at them, and we will will be able to ask those questions to the presenter. Okay, I hope that is uh, that clear. Is that clear? And uh, we will right now proceed to our uh, keynote address and devotional. Please welcome, sir. I praise the Lord for having this chance to be with you in this uh, AATS forum with the theme, Making Disciples, Opportunities, Challenges of Developing Faithful Disciples in Asia. Uh, I remember last year I was invited by Brother Sitagang or Dr. Sitagang, but I hadn't the chance to participate and it's only now that God has allowed me to be with you in this forum. In our program, uh, supposed to be, we have ended our devotional, our, uh, this portion of our meeting. But the next session will be according to the schedule at 9.15. So I have enough time, at least uh, until 9 o'clock perhaps, because it's almost 8.30, okay? I promise you, before 9 o'clock will be finished. Okay, and then another thing in the program, it was printed that the title of my message is Disciple, Discipling All Nations, How? How? And I think it will not be enough to discuss this topic within 30 minutes. And so, actually the title of my message this morning is, What is a Disciple? What is a Disciple? In Matthew 28, 18 up to 20, we know this very popular passage for missiologists and evangelists. We call this what? The Great, the Great Commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am always with you to the very end of the age. I remember the statement of one of my mentors here in Ayas, and I think he is one of the presenters, Dr. Uh, my beloved professor, uh, what's the name of this? Dr. Park. He said, oftentimes when we speak about mission in evangelism, we quote this passage, Matthew 28, verses 18 up to 20. But unfortunately, it is being used just as a jumping board, okay, for promotional talk, to call the attention for mission without understanding the context by which this passage was given by our Savior Jesus Christ. Oftentimes, the immediate context and the wider context of disciple making, according to Matthean Gospel, is neglected. And today, 
I would like to answer the question, what actually is the meaning of being a disciple in the light of the Matian Gospel? Let us go first into the immediate context of this passage. Number one, a believer, a disciple. A disciple is a believer and a recipient of Jesus Christ's resurrection. A disciple is a believer, a witness and a believer of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, I would like to remind you, brethren, that you cannot be, you cannot be a, a maker of the, of the disciple, a maker of disciple unless, not until, you yourself is a disciple. You cannot give what you do not have. Before we can make disciples, we personally should be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, a disciple we know is a student, a follower. And in the context of what we're learning here, a disciple is a believer. Then, if we are going back to 18 up to 19 of this passage, it says here, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, make disciples of all nations. And I would like to underscore the word authority, power. In our lesson, I think, how many weeks ago, we discussed about and we learned about the authority of Jesus Christ as a teacher, right? And we learned that the authority of Jesus Christ as a teacher was far beyond the style, the methodology, and the kind of teaching of the great rabbis during his time. Here in our passage, I would iterate the authority, the power of Jesus Christ in the context of this chapter. Remember, chapter 28 in the book of Matthew, it talks about what? It talks about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, here, we can see that when he speaks about his authority in heaven and on the earth, it could mean the authority of Jesus Christ over death because of his resurrection. Jesus Christ, our Savior, was able to overcome death. He defeated death by means of his resurrection. And his disciples were witness unto it. They have the assurance of the belief, of the fact, that by the virtue of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, all of them who will believe in him, all of them who will believe in him, will also be resurrected. Brethren, disciples of Jesus, remember this is our message. We have a Savior who is powerful than death. Amen. Amen. The greatest enemy of humanity is death. The greatest enemy of humanity is death. And the possibility of death is always there. Right? I remember the statement of my grandpa. He said, Julio, remember this. If you will not die at daytime, you will die at night time. Surely. <laughs> and I believe in him. And now, a days, perhaps you are, you are hearing about the big one that is coming. Have you heard about the big one coming to the Philippines? And uh, have you heard about the West Valley Fault? And uh, they said, uh, Silang, and they said that uh, AUP is... Uh, just planted on the top of this uh, valley pole. And I'm wondering to myself, what if an intensity 10 earthquake would happen? Imagine intensity 10, intensity 8, and somebody told me, oh, that's impossible. Because intensity 10, by, that, by the time it would happen, oh, I think, no building. But what if it would happen? Where will we go? Jokingly, I'm saying unto them, the only solution to that big one, and if ever this uh, intensity 10 earthquake would happen in this country, even in your country, I'm jokingly saying unto them, the only solution is the resurrection. Amen? Amen. The only solution is the resurrection. Where will I go? 
where will you go? Our safety and our peace lays only in the hands of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is powerful than death. You see, brothers and sisters, science and technology, they continue to discover ways on how to delay death. But no amount of science and technology, no amount of science and technology can deter it, can prevent it. Philosophy, different branches of learning, they are all trying to discover and rationalize for the purpose of alleviating the pain and suffering caused by death. But we are aware of the fact that every man-made solution to the greatest enemy of man would fail. But Jesus Christ said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. I have overcome death. All who will believe in me will not be bound by it forever. You are a witness to it. You are my disciples. You are a, recip a recipient of it. Go and make disciples of all nations. Go and make a copy of yourself. Make people of this world just like what you are. A believer and a recipient of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is why his disciples of today, we, we do not fear death. For Christ, for the disciples of Jesus Christ, we know that death is only a small matter. It is only a slip. As Christ's disciples today, we should lift him up, Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. That is the unique message of Christianity. This is our hope and this is our message. Number two, a disciple is a recipient of his calling and a recipient of his teaching. Right? A disciple actually responds to Jesus' call to restoration. Remember the message of John? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And then Jesus Christ also, in his, preach, in his preaching, he said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And to these messages, the disciple responded. You see, to repent is a call to be restored in the image of God. It is a life of transformation. It's a call to be restored also in his kingdom. Thus, the message was a call to be restored in Christ's image or in the image of God and to be restored in his kingdom. To this call, a wretched sinner responds and becomes a disciple. It was for them and for us today a message of restoration. A disciple lives according to the principle of his king and his kingdom. Remember, brethren, Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? The principles of God's kingdom, the constitution of God's kingdom, and actually this is the do's and don'ts for the citizen of the kingdom of God. The disciple, for the disciple of Jesus Christ. Remember, if you want to be happy, Jesus Christ said, be humble. Be sorry for your sin. Be meek. Be ever hungry for righteousness. Be merciful. Be pure in heart. Be a peacemaker. Do not be afraid of being persecuted because of righteousness. And then he said, be a light and the salt of the earth. And a disciple of Jesus Christ accepts 
the magnified law. Okay? Uh, further, a disciple should be somebody harboring no hatred, no hatred, no resentment in your heart. No resentment. No harboring of ill feelings against anybody. Be forgiving and find always. Take the initiative for reconciliation. That's very clear in the Sermon on the Mount. Be no lustful look. No divorce. Say no to divorce except for marital and unfaithfulness. Be truthful. No plagiarism. No lying. When you are treated unjustly and unfairly, even by your brother or sister in the faith, and much more outside of our faith, what was the teaching of Jesus Christ? Turn the other cheek. Remember that? Turn the other cheek. Walk the second mile. <clears throat> wow, somebody said, I hope it's not there. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray for your persecutor. That is the meaning of being a disciple. Give to the needy. Pray to the Father. In the life of a disciple, there is no hypocrisy. No hypocrisy. Gather treasure in heaven. Trust God in all your needs. Judge not. God alone is our judge. Okay? Ask, seek, knock. <coughs> Thank you. Ask, seek, and knock. Enter the narrow gate. Bear good fruits. Be a wise builder. Obey the word of God. All these things, all of these things, they picture the meaning of what a disciple actually is according to the context in the Sermon, of the, in the Sermon on the Mount. Number three, a disciple is a receiver of the death of Jesus Christ. It was for the disciples that Jesus Christ prayed Three times, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But not as I will, but your will be done. Three times he prayed, and then finally, at the third time, he said, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken unless I drink it, your will be done. Excuse me. I have to drink. Calvary was just the consequence of the decision of Jesus Christ in Gethsemane. Remember that. Somebody told that the battle was won not at Calvary, but the battle was won at Gethsemane. Because what happened in Calvary was just a consequence of what Jesus Christ decided in Gethsemane. The decision was done in Gethsemane. He will drink the cup of suffering and death for the sake of all his disciples then. He drank the cup of suffering and death for your sake, for your sake, for your sake, for your sake, for all our sake. He drank the cup of suffering and death. Ellen G. White describes in the book, The Side of Ages, the thing that happened in Gethsemane, he, she said, in Gethsemane, the destiny of humanity trembled in balance. He could have said, I will go back to the Father. I will go back to the Father and let the sinner suffer the consequences of his own sin. That is just. That is being just. <coughs> but you see, God is a God of justice. 
in a God of love. In Isaiah 49, it says there, Your name, your name, and my name, they are all engraven in the hands, in the palms of Jesus Christ. Okay? And because of that, He cannot afford to lose you. He cannot afford to lose you and me. And so He decided, I will drink the cup. I will drink the cup. Thus, a disciple, you today, you are a recipient, a receiver of the decision of Jesus Christ that led his death on Calvary. To summarize, what is a disciple? A disciple is a witness and a recipient of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is a recipient of his calling and his teaching. And finally, a disciple is a recipient of the death of Jesus Christ. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Do you have in your heart the assurance, the assurance of the resurrection of our Savior? And are you willing to obey and uphold his calling and his teaching in your life? And finally, how many of you are thankful that Jesus Christ died for you and you are called by him to be his disciple? Remember, brethren, it's a great privilege for us to be called as disciples. We are receiver. We are a receiver of all the blessings bestowed upon us by God. But remember in the Great Commission, Jesus Christ said, make disciples of all nations. Do not just be a receiver of God's blessing. Be a sharer of it. Be a sharer of every blessing that you receive. This is our great commission. God bless us all.